bumper grid of micros. It's a cadet class, but running with a two-stroke Rotax engine with Harry Neeson starting the day from P1 with Jake Grufferty alongside Logan Lauder and Toby Dukes on row two, JJ Lowe and Jack Baker on row three. Carl McLean and Tyler O'Neill will share row four with the top ten. Completed by Caden Simpson and James Tate. Aston Brown, the championship leader, he starts 11th alongside the 28th of Daniel Minto. With Riley Buckton Young, the driver of the day in this class from fullback, starting 13th alongside Alex Jones with Ella Lucia and Jack Hutchinson. Completing our 16 runners in Micromax. It's a rolling start for the smallest of the Rotax variants. You will uh, make their way round. It's a cadet class, remember, it's the same sort of age group as the Hondas. It's uh, 8 to uh, 16, as there's a little bit of confusion there in the back. Looks like Toby Dukes has just carried a little bit too much speed into the back of Jake Grufferty, and he's not in the tram lines, and there's no way we're going to do this one like that because it was uh, everybody was everywhere, and they need to stay in those painted yellow tram lines that are uh, provided by the circuit until they cross over the start finish line then they're able to break formation and uh, go racing so we're going to try that one once again Jake Grufford is going to have to come through because he's currently I think down in there in P4 so he's going to have to come through and just retake his position at the front of the pack and get them all into the uh, the correct order once again so we're gonna have to sort this one out because it looks like Toby Dukes is down there as well so at the moment, they're not in the uh, not in the order that they should be because the 39 is is uh, is Toby Dukes and he should be in P4 on the outside of the second row. So unless they are happy with the formation, but the actual positioning of all our carts is certainly not where it should be. Neeson though in the 47, he's where he needs to be. He's in P number one. So let's see when, whether we get this one going, albeit. Uh, not quite sure it's in the formation that it should be, but uh, the driver's responsibility to make sure they're in the correct position and nobody else. Looks like we could be going racing this time. Nobody's got their arm up to suggest we're going round again, so we are away and racing in Micromax heat number one. And Riley Buckton Young there on the outside of the number 25. That's Ella Lucia going round the outside there, trying to hold on as they make their way down towards Christmas Corner then for the first time in this seven minutes plus one lap race. It looks like we've already had one driver bolt and it's not the pole sitter. Harry Neeson, there he is in the middle of the pack, battling it out with James Tate in the 20. That's Daniel Minto, the 28, going round the outside into position. We'll clock them as they go over. The 33's Logan Lauder in front of them. As Tate gets down the inside, then of Neeson. Neeson doesn't give that one up easily into the... Uh, Left-right complex then. But, uh, James Tate moves safely through. Over the line they come then for the first time in our class here for our Rotax Heat number one. Lauder leading the way then from Daniel Minto as Harry Neeson goes to the inside of the 48 machine of JJ Lowe. They're going to run three or four wide now down into the uh, Christmas corner. Aston Brown is starting to come through. Showing his P6 in front of Carl McLean, Alex Jones, Riley Buckton Young and Toby Dukes. We have 14 on timing, although we did have 16 on the grid at the start of the day. So either we're missing some or some are not getting picked up here at Wilton Mill. Let's have a quick look and see if there's any numbers that we are, we're missing. Tyler O'Neill not showing us picking a time up in P14. It was the 12 of McLean. Bounces over the curbs enough to give his head a wobble <laughs> on the way into that corner. Tyler O'Neill sets the uh, the fastest lap in the 99. I think it's him who's actually out at the front of the pack, <clears throat> showing down there in P14. But there was one driver at the start who just managed, who just balked and just went. With the 33 of Logan Lauder holding off James Tate and Tames Tate trying left and right to get through. Has a helmet tap, Lauder, just to suggest that they should probably be working together as uh, Tate then gets alongside. Very difficult to tame these youngsters and in, into the racecraft of working together to try and catch those in front when they just want to try and get past as uh, Tate goes slightly wide, opens the gap up though down the inside of Lauder and James Tate comes through. Aston Brown 
the next driver to try and uh, get his way through on Logan Lauder. The uh, heat one, uh, round one winner from fullback Aston Brown, who won three of the four races that day. James Tate picked up the win in the other one, albeit on that occasion uh, Aston Brown was struggling somewhat with his engine. That necessitated a change through uh, before the final. He did come through, though, from pole position to take the victory, but at the moment is struggling to find a way through on Logan Lauder. And what that's actually doing is backing him up into the pack. Behind him, it looks like this JJ Lowe and Kyle McLean coming to uh, join this battle. Keep an eye out then for the 48 of Lowe. He's going to pitch. There he is in the background. And Aston Brown really needs to find a way past Logan Lauder, or he's going to fall into the clutches of. JJ Lowe behind him and not too far back Kyle McLean as well Harry Neeson's there and there is uh, Lowe coming through on both Lauder and in front of them it looks like Nisa, um, Brown has already found a way through so Brown's done what he needed to do there as James Tate comes down the inside of Logan Lauder and Kyle McLean as well so not the not the best lap there for Logan Lauder he's lost a number of places and all of that was set up from the earlier part of the lap where he got overtaken the door got open it compromised his line on the exit into the boot corner and then uh, everything else round pit bend and all the way up it's compromised his line is exit speed and a number of places as well now Alex Jones has come through in uh, ninth place up into eighth at the expense of Logan Lord and so when the time they come to timing over the line in a few moments you'll see that that top 10 down the left side will reassemble itself into the uh, correct order as uh, the 30 of Alex Jones Looks very, very racy. Not, not, not the, uh, not the tidiest of line there around the pit bend corner, but carrying a huge amount of speed. The top two moving away. Then there's only eight tenths between Tyler O'Neill and Daniel Minto. Then we've got quite a gap back then to James Tate and JJ Lowe. This is the battle behind between Harry Neesom. He's in sixth with McLean and Jones behind. Those in front have started to uh, move away and spread themselves out ever so slightly. One, one driver we are missing is Caden Simpson. Certainly on timing. I haven't seen him out there on track. He's got a blue and yellow cart running in very similar livery to the uh, Lando Norris cart livery out there on track. But I haven't seen him. We'll just keep an eye on him later on when we go to the checkered flag and see whether he does come over and see where he slots in. If either we're missing him on timing or he's just not out there on circuit. We'll, as I say, we'll keep an eye on that one as Neeson holding off Kyle McLean and Alex Jones as James Tate goes defensive holding off JJ Lowe this is the battle for third place Tate in third Lowe in fourth Aston Brown not too far back he was in front of JJ Lowe a few laps ago but looks like Lowe has managed to make his way through and Lowe is closing in then on James Tate as Tate takes a, a bit of bit too much curb on the entrance there to the left hander and then a little bit too much more on the on the uh, way out of Ozier's and that has compromised his exit speed no end and JJ Lowe comes through into third place Tate then down to fourth and Tate goes slightly wide into the boot complex and looks like uh, Aston Brown was going to try and get to the inside as well he can't get through as the time goes down below a minute there's a change for the lead Daniel Minto dives down the inside of Tyler O'Neill into the Christmas corner he arrived so late into there I just don't think O'Neill knew that he was coming but Daniel Minto hard on the brakes manages to get the 28 machine stopped and with one lap remaining as they head towards the last lap board now here at Wilton Mill I think they might actually get two out of this the pace so frantic in this first heat for our Micro Max class and they definitely will get round the boot complex and round pit bend before the time elapses so we are going to get two more minutes but Daniel Minto who has been closing in on Tyler O'Neill has actually opened up three or four cart lengths round the crook corner and let's see whether O'Neill can get a good exit and get in the slipstream of Daniel Minto try and return the favour down into Christmas corner not close enough this time the time elapses so it's going to be half a lap plus then the last lap and Tyler O'Neill goes to the inside again half a move down the inside of Daniel Minto Minto runs wide over the rumble strip on the outside and has a quick look over his shoulder to uh, assess whether O'Neill is still there. He is. He is showing on timing once again there's been one lap down. And this could potentially be where they're coming over start the start-finish line here at Wilton Mill. If they're running wide over the 
uh, rumble strip. They might actually be missing some of the timing loop, but he's definitely still there in second place. Last lap board out then here in Micromax. Heat number one and leading the way, Daniel Minto from Tyler O'Neill, the top two. And O'Neill now noticeably closer than what he was on the previous lap. And Daniel Minto noticeably more defensive as they go down into Christmas Corner. Parks the 28, pretty much following that line of the tarmac down the middle of the track, Daniel Minto defensive, looking left and right to see where Tyler O'Neill is. Can O'Neill spring a surprise? The only real overtaking opportunity now is where <clears throat> they're coming up to for this corner. Line it up round Oziers, get a good run on that curb and then throw it down the inside into the boot corner. O'Neill goes for the move down the inside. They're side by side into the boot. They're still going to run side by side. Can O'Neill get the cut back? No, McLean stamps hard on the brakes mid corner. Runs O'Neill wide onto the final complex and Daniel Minto holds on for victory in heat number one.